Okay, thank you. I, I, as most of you are uh, probably aware of the Jack software, what I thought I would do is uh, just give you a little bit of history on it, what it's been doing over the last five years or so, and some of the things that we're currently working on with the, with the technology uh, behind it. Uh, first of all, I, Jack has been kind of acquired by a number of companies now. It's now part of Siemens. Uh, in particular, it's part of the Technomatics vertical, which is the vertical that uh, deals with manufacturing simulation. Uh, but while it's kind of housed within that, within the Siemens environment, uh, it's, the technology is exposed in the whole portfolio tools uh, that address the entire uh, porf uh, the life cycle uh, uh, tools in there, starting from uh, the integration into the NX environment for uh, design, uh, like the top picture there for kind of the packaging sort of uh, questions, to the manufacturing, to serviceability, and uh, uh, other types of analysis in the consumer product space. So uh, a variety of products, all kind of based on a core toolkit that's integrated into these various host applications. So the technology that I'm going to talk about is really the technology of that toolkit. And uh, yeah, so, so the, these products aren't really different, but really uh, just kind of uh, how they're exposed in these various applications based on the user uh, needs. If we look at the uh, introductions over the last uh, five years or so, uh, if, starting on the left-hand side, about five years ago, we figured out how to do full body posture prediction uh, using predictive methods, non-optimization, but uh, kind of uh, data-driven methods where we really tried to understand what do people do uh, in order to accomplish a task? What do they do with their balance? What do they do uh, to achieve targets when they reach out to them? And so you see this, this person chasing this uh, keyboard around. This is all predicted uh, posture and motion. And because we were able to do that and kind of do this all in real, real time, as you see, uh, it enabled a lot of other uh, technology developments, in particular uh, kind of automated simulation systems. In specific, we could have a system called the Task Simulation Builder, where you are, uh, you're commanding the figure to do things, to go places, to put, get objects, put them, uh, and not uh, adjusting joint angles or keyframing uh, simulations together. Uh, so the, the, the uh, posturing is one kind of vector of development that, uh, that uh, we've invested heavily on. It, there's two other vectors. One is the uh, kind of the visual look of the figures. Uh, about three years ago, we introduced uh, the flexible uh, skin jack figures. The, the one on the left, you see, is kind of a segmented one. The, the, uh, the next one uh, uh, here in this uh, picture is kind of a deformable skin uh, uh, introduction. And uh, the third vector of development is in the human performance tools. I thought I'd go into a little bit of detail kind of on, the, on these last three pictures here, kind of show you the latest developments in those uh, three areas. First, uh, this is just kind of an image of our uh, new figures that was just recently introduced. So, you know, base figures for accurate anthropometric sort of evaluations and also clothed figures for uh, more presentation type uh, requirements. I, the, this whole technology of uh, skin deformation uh, is making, a, making it possible to kind of represent figures of very different uh, body shapes and much more accurately than we ever could before. So we, now we can scale these figures uh, based on uh, 3D body scan data, PCA models of shape. We can feed anthropometric data from a variety of populations into those uh, PCA models. And so we, we can really kind of start to represent these different body forms uh, in a much more accurate way than we ever could. Now what's interesting about this uh, scaling is that it really lends itself to be able to animate any kind of human form that we might get. Uh, so I'm going to take you through kind of a, a work with a recent body scan that we got of a soldier with protective equipment on. Uh, so on the left-hand side, you'd see uh, the scan, and what we're going to do is going to fit a jack figure uh, internally to that scan. So we can scale the figure to represent the actual subject of the scan. You'd fit it inside of the mesh. That puts the skeleton inside of that, uh, that 3D body scan, including the landmarks that are on the person. So those are scaled with them. So now those landmarks are placed much more accurately than we could ever do by placing them on the surface of a scan. They come along with the fit of the figure underneath. 
and that can make it a real Jack figure. So now we can animate that figure uh, within the environment. So here's the Apostle prediction. See the Apostle prediction in the TSP system uh, using this, uh, this 3D body scan data. Uh, in addition, okay, so part of the overall kind of ease of use enhancements also, we understand that uh, there's a need to, to uh, not require experts to uh, manipulate tools like this. We have to make it easier for um, everyone to use it and everyone to get the same answers as well. So if you do analysis and I do an analysis, we're going to get the same answer out, which is really kind of the crux of an engineering tool. Uh, so one of the recent advancements in our posture prediction capability is the ability to understand how forces that people need to exert influence the posture. Here you see uh, kind of three different uh, force exertion uh, levels and the influence of those. I see this here within our uh, environment, so we can kind of place uh, grasp locations for the figure to uh, reach to. We can increase the forces that they have to reach, uh, have to exert. You can see the posture changing according to that. Not only does it change the uh, the uh, overall posture, but also predicts foot location. So you can see those uh, moving. This is based on work from the Kilosa method at the University of Michigan. So here we see this also integrated here in the task simulation builder environment again, the soldier kind of lifting up the battery, putting it up there, and then exerting a force to kind of simulate pushing it onto the drop. So that, again, all this is uh, predicted uh, via these algorithms. Continue to enhance the human performance tools that are there, uh, the you know, you know, ability to do uh, just a wide variety of kind of uh, assessments. Here in this particular last release, we added the ability to add, uh, to analyze risk strength uh, as part of the US CAR uh, funded project as well. Uh, and uh, it integrated that into also the, the force solver uh, 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 solution that Jim Hopkins talked a little bit about. A lot of this technology also finds its way into other areas. Uh, in, I mentioned the predictive capabilities, analytical kind of solutions to uh, posture prediction. You can use that for improved motion tracking, going away from optimization-based approaches to more analytical ones where it can use the data directly coming from uh, the motion capture systems for much higher performance, uh, much better control over the figure. Uh, with the recent advancements of uh, the motion capture systems to be able to track multiple actors, we can now support that as well. Our performance is sufficient that we can do both of the actors at the same time. So you can see that here uh, for this Orion uh, crew capsule assembly from the uh, supplier to NASA. Human performance tools can run in real time with those uh, simulations or the, the tracking. Uh, in a little bit more uh, on kind of the integration of all these technologies into a framework that can be easily used by the engineering community. This is the test simulation builder on our draft product, uh, where you see on the bottom screen, uh, it's a little bit difficult to see here, but uh, basically the commands for the uh, high level commands for the figure to execute, and then the actions that are actually computed by the system automatically to figure out how to execute those task sequences. So here we try a what if scenario. Uh, we resolve it. The system is kind of figuring out where everything is in the scene now, uh, calculating the actions that are required to accomplish them. And we hit the play button, and it goes and you know adjusts to the, to the differences. In this case, the height of those uh, bins has been changed, and the simulation can run. And again, the analysis tools, uh, in this case, the low back analysis, is running uh, in real time. We also have the same thing integrated into uh, the process simulate environment. This is a uh, process uh, validation tool that's tied into our team center database where a lot of companies have their data. Uh, it's you know, an important aspect of, of being able to do the analysis where the data is. The data comes in from the team center environment into the process simulate environment where again, we have all this posture prediction capability. The same technologies, the same core toolkit is driving the figure. Uh, here we can execute uh, simulations within this environment. Uh, you can see here uh, 
for the analysis tools coming up, and also we can do uh, create reports here over the, the course history of the um, of the simulation. So one of the kind of future developments, obviously, is where we could before do static analysis of situations. We now have time history information uh, of simulations and can use that information to look at cumulative kind of effects of uh, executing tasks. Thank you.